Hey, welcome back to the Builder Basement. Uh, first of all, foremost, right off the bat, if you like what I'm doing, subscribe. I'm getting some subscribers out there. <clears throat> I'd like to hit 100 as soon as possible. Uh, once there, let's see if we can explode this thing and build it even further. Um, today, we're working on the Voron 2.4 again. Uh, we're actually building a Voron sandwich. Um, doesn't sound too advertising to me, but uh, definitely need to get it done so we can get this printer up. Um, I am going to touch back on my previous video where I talked about an issue I had with the motor mounts on the uh, Z-axis motor and where the manual was a little bit off. So why don't we start off with that. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So, well, let's get off this real quick here. All right, see so these motor mounts. Okay, so according to the manual, uh, let's get this. According to the manual, all right, according to the manual for the last time, uh, the motor mounts are uh, mounted with a complete square portion that goes completely around the motor. Um, but as commented, and once I left my last video, I went ahead and opened up the STL files and actually just for good measure, printed off a new one on my Ender 5. Um, came out actually pretty, pretty dang good. Um, I guess there is a change, there's an upgrade. So the, 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 um, the mounts I did have, however, the manual is incorrect. So these are the new mounts. Uh, they're touching on three of the screws as opposed to four of them. Um, I, I don't know if it's gonna make much of a difference. I'm assuming somebody much smarter than me figured out why they should be this way. Um, so I'm good with it, uh, but I figured I'd make mention of that real quick. All right, on with the show. All right, so the deck sandwich. Kind of like a club sandwich, only a lot less tasty. So um, <clears throat> what we have for parts. So we have M5 screws for these guys right here. All right, and I'm gonna grab one of my Indiums here. Just uh, get all those together so we don't lose them. Um, you got your T nuts and you got your dins right there. And last but not least, you have your actual bottom deck. Uh, this is part of the Formbot kit. Uh, came with the protection of a plastic one here. I'm sure that is horribly loud. I apologize for that. Matter of fact, let's see if we can fix that a little bit here. I do record live, even though I'm not live casting it. So I'm gonna drop the audio here as I rip this plastic off this next one. Stand by. All right. Talk a little louder so you can still hear me, but try not to blow anybody's ears out with this plastic. And man, that is a horrible sound. And I probably should have done that before I started the video, but I'm showing you what I see for the first time. So if I see surprises, you see surprises. Um, not quite sure why I had protective covering on here. It is, and it kind of picks up on the lighting there. Um, it is not gouged or marked in a, you know, a sense of gouging or marking, but it is, um, almost has like machine markings from where it came off a belt or something uh, on that side and on this side not quite as bad but uh, not great either but you know what it's going on the bottom no one's going to see it it's not a big deal uh, so it's not going to affect us all right set that aside real quick and bring this over all right Let's see if i get that in the camera for you this a little bit there kind of square that up a little bit probably looks really wonky on the camera to the angles that we have um, but here we go so what you're looking at right now is the bottom of the Voron frame uh, the very bottom uh, these are the mounts for the beds right here which are actually mounted on the bottom of these extrusions uh, so you're not seeing them that way so if I flip this over it'd be the way it's going to sit on the desk uh, but as it stands right here 
Um, this is what you're going to see when you flip yours over if you are building one. Uh, there is a note on here. There's a couple things. I'm going to read them off real quick. Um, basically, buying this with M5 fasteners onto the DIN rails. Uh, they do talk about if your screws are a little bit thick, that you might have to use some spacers or washers so you don't wind up going beyond in, you know, into your slot and going beyond into the metal, uh, into the aluminum there, so you can still get a, um, a tight fit. And it also mentions to check your orientation with an explanation point. Um, the notch is in the back. All right, so notch is in the back. And I don't know that there's a front or back as it stands currently, but as soon as we get this on, there will be. Um, let's see, did rail is mounting holes with the holes are run smaller than the maximum width of the bottom frame so you can line these properly. Okay, so I am going to do this so that back is facing towards you, front is facing towards me, and it's going to be something like that right there. Okay. So when we put in these bottom mounts for the bed, they told us not to tighten them. And this is probably one of the reasons right here. Um, we are going to be mounting these DIN rails, just like so, across here. And that's what our final will look like. All right, so before we do that, first thing we gotta do is get some T-nuts in there. And I've seen some struggles of people doing this. Um, didn't look too difficult, but you know, I haven't done it yet. So let's see here. Get in there, buddy. That's not quite sitting in there, right? <sighs> If I can resolve that. What is going on here? Whoa! It looks like Oh, there we go. All right. It wasn't playing nice, but it decided to work with me. All right, let's get that one in, get that one in. Again, I mentioned it before, but these little neodymium magnets, uh, keep all your screws right side. Um, buy them on Amazon, anywhere. You can get them at the hardware store too. Um, but what they do is like to keep all your screws Pull what you need to do what you got to do, um, and then you just throw everything down and it holds everything in place for you so you don't wind up losing anything, or at least help you not lose anything. I'm not going to guarantee you not, but let's see, get this one in. I guess this one's going to be difficult too. but not least, this guy right there. All right, so what we'll do, and the fun part about this is everything's kind of slotted a little bit so that there's a little bit of room to, to manipulate the pieces, but even though you have two slots, the slots do need to align at some point, and that alignment needs to be right where your T-nuts are. So I got one right here, I'm gonna grab, Let's see here. Grab this right here. Let's see if we can find where the other ones decided to take off to. This one's over here. Put it down a little bit. All right. Put that away for a second. And try to line these ones up with the other ones, at least close. And up. I'm just going to center these out based on the cutouts that are on 
piece of plastic here. And then I'm going to set these like that. And this one like that. So we want it right about where we need to be. All right, next thing. We got our M5 screws. No mention here, anything like uh, using any type of thread locking compound, so I don't think we need it either. It's not really a highly shook or moving section of the actual printer here. So. Just trying to get everything lined up. All right, so we get that. And let's get this where we need it to be. Feeling we might be moving these around a little bit when we start mounting electronics to the bottom here. Because that's basically what you're doing here. Um, you know, you're, you're doing two things. This right here becomes your mounting point for your electronics, your Raspberry Pi, your 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 um, you know, your stepper, um, your basically all your electronics, your uh, power supply and everything else like that. And it also separates all that good stuff from the one bad thing that's going to be up here that's not going to be down there, which is heat. Um, this is a pretty warm enclosure, which is what makes it great for printing so many different types of materials. So you gotta flip that back over. Looks like we picked up something there. All right, and um, it looks like now we're at the point where we're mounting our feet. And let's see how we have that oriented. All right, so they got that and they're facing this. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna go just about like that. So I did note one thing here, uh, when I was putting these together, there is a little uh, a key area right here. Um, and I had a guess, you know, I, I don't look too far ahead, but I had a guess that that was because it fit in the extrusion and I was right, it does, it kind of aligns you. Um, so between that and the screws you're gonna put in there, um, you have a pretty nice fitting piece. So let's do that next. And that's gonna be with M540s for those. So let's see here. All right, we grab some M540s. These aren't overly greased up like some of the other ones I've had, so uh, I'm not gonna have to wipe those down. And let's go back to that. <clears throat> All right, so obviously we're going to need some more T-nuts. And where are my M5s? M5 T-nuts, here we go. We might as well grab a decent chunk of these. I'm going to grab another one of these neodymiums. Put that right there. And I'm not counting, I'm just placing. All right. So, what we're going to be doing, let's add a little bit, make it easier for everybody to see. This is going to get mounted just like that. And second T-nut. And second T-nut. And then the fun part, which will be line these up. It's just a little high for me to see what I'm doing while I'm doing it, but uh, I'll try my best here. See if I can get in there. See what's going on. All right. All 
All right, that should be pretty close. <clears throat> and down in, down in. And I'm going to need a bigger driver. Let's see here. Ouch. All right. There we go. So we'll get this. Those can go a little bit tighter, a little bit more uh, heft in terms of what we have for metal. So there you have it. All right, so there's our sandwich. There is one foot and let's do one of the motor mounts. Again, not looking to waste your time. Just gonna do one, come back another video. The other ones will be done magically. Um, now let's see how this goes. All right, I need to change this perspective just a little bit because as much as I want you to see, I, I need to see it myself. So, uh, let's see, I can work like that. All right, so I've got, I've got the back of that, and then this is facing towards that. Something like that, I believe. And, okay. And that's being held in with an M510. So let's grab an M510, it's an M516. Let's see, M510s. And five tens. All right, two of those guys. That looks awful short. Is there really one M510? Huh. Okay. Cool. And I see on here we have one of our accent pieces, which is a little lever. Um, Couple of these. So, as I mentioned before, I went ahead and I printed mine in blue. Um, I did buy them with the red, the Voron red, um, but I wanted blue, so I got blue. So, all right, and let's do this. Uh, All right, so we're going to put a single screw in on the far end from the foot. And then the second foot is actually going to hold that lever along with the motor mount. So, all right. All right, so. And these are going to go in in what fashion? Like this with the lever pointing down. This portion, little piton there is gonna point down towards the same direction as the foot. So she's going to sit something like that. All right, so two M5s, a couple of T-nuts. T-nuts in here real quick, and the second T-nut, I think we're going to want to be able to slide this back and forth to put a proper amount of tension on our belt when we get to that point. So. That one wasn't in all the way, huh? All right. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna put them close, and then we'll move them away if we if we need to. That should be pretty. Right on that one right 
there. Sorry, my big melon's kind of blocking the way. All right. I guess. I'm going to be right up against there. Right, that's pretty close. And do that one as well. Alright, let's get that first M5 in there. Second one, like that. So pull that over a little bit. this up so it slides pretty easy yep and then we'll pull that all the way over put that on and I'm sure we're going to tension that at some point but for now I will just Give it enough so it's on there. There we go. And then, kind of a tight working space there. All right. So, if I had to give some quick tips on this, oh, that's tension, that's what that is. I get it. Okay, so if I had to give some quick tips on this, um, one, don't worry about where you're mounting your motor when you're doing this. Um, it doesn't matter where you're putting the motor specifically. Uh, when you do this, just get on the T-nuts, use your M5 screws, get it locked in. Um, because you're going to have trouble. That's kind of hard to see. I can't show it really well. Um, it's going. You're going to have trouble getting in here for this particular M5 screw to get tightened in. So you're going to want to have everything kind of worked out. Then slide it back. Then tighten it up. Get yourself, well, bring it all the way back, get yourself on the belt, um, and then get that on there a little bit. Um, and there you go. So much for that. So, again, thank you for visiting. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in what I'm doing. Uh, I'm continuing off with this build. I'm trying to do small snapshots of kind of what you need to see. So when you go through this, you're not wasting hours upon hours upon hours. Uh, this is a 24 to 35. 30-ish hour build. Um, I'm trying to really consolidate down to probably about 10 hours worth of uh, video, 8 to 10. Uh, so I'm going to do this times four, come back, show you what's going on, and then move on to the next step. If you got any comments, please leave them. Um, in the process of upgrading both my audio and my video uh, so I can get things to be a little bit more up to par where I want them. Um, and again, go ahead and subscribe. Um, look for subscribers. I'd like to get up to 100. So if you're watching this, if you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and give me a subscription. You know, uh, sub it out. Till next time.